Do you understand what DLI means? Do you know how to download data using SDA at CHAS? If you don't, you should check out our first video, Accessing SDA at CHAS and Downloading Data, which you can find in the description below. Once you're comfortable with those concepts, you're ready to learn about using SDA at CHAS to view data. You can do more than download data with SDA at CHAS. You can use the website's interface to examine data without having to download it to your computer. This can be great if you want to take a quick look to get a general idea of what the data looks like and whether the variables in a survey will work for your needs. In this video, you will learn how to examine a variable, how to create a cross-tab table, how to filter a table, and how to set a control variable. However, we will not cover how to use the Analysis tab to do further types of analysis online or how to create your own variables. Let's get started. And remember that, as noted in the previous video in this series, Accessing SDA at CHAS and Downloading Data, we will be working with the UT SDA interface, and you can find the link to that video in the description below. We're going to access the data for the 2017-2018 cycle of the Canadian Community Health Survey. The main data page is where you can view data without having to download it first. While this interface may seem confusing at first, the ultimate purpose is to create a table of the data you wish to see. Each table will have columns and rows, and you can filter or control certain variables to view different aspects of the data. The row and column of the cross-tab table are made up of two variables. To find a variable, we will use the Variable Selection section of the interface. There are three ways to find a variable. Method 1. You can search for a variable by typing in a keyword into the search bar. Method 2. You can browse through each variable group by clicking on the plus sign next to the book. Clicking on the specific variable will select it. Method 3. If you already know which variable you wish to use, you can type it into the selected box or directly into the row or column text box. For our rows, let's consider life satisfaction. Search for the word life within the search bar. A new window will pop up with the results. There are two variables described as containing satisfaction with life in general in the search results. We can click on view to get a description of the variables, their frequencies, the actual number of people in the survey sample that belong in each category, the codes for the different categories, and what the codes represent. Or we can click on the name of a variable to place it in the selected box. Let's click on view to see the difference between variable gen underscore 010 and GENDVSWL. You would need to consult the codebook to better understand gen underscore 010 but GENDVSWL seems pretty straightforward. Let's click on GENDVSWL. Sure, it looks like nothing happens, but let's go ahead and close this window to return to our previous window. Here the name of the variable is now in the selected box. Now you can click the row button below to place this variable in the row of our table, in the table construction section of the interface. Let's choose a variable for the column. Let's consider the differences in life satisfaction levels by levels of income. Browse through the list until you find income. Click on the plus sign to open up this variable grouping. We can see that personal income all sources is located in this grouping. Click on it and you'll notice that this places the variable in the selected box. You can assign that variable to the columns by clicking copy to columns. We are almost ready to create our table. There are already options selected in the table options by default, and these are great. We also want to select row under percentaging and click on unweighted below N of cases to display. Now it's time to run the table. So hit the run the table button. We have a colorful table with plenty of interesting information. The rows indicate the life satisfaction of people who answer the survey, the survey respondents while the columns allow us to compare the differences for different levels of income. Within each box, there are four numbers. The first number is the column percentage. This means that if you take 100 people that have an income of less than $20,000, 34.2 of them would say that they are very satisfied with life, while 3.1 are dissatisfied. All of these numbers will add up to 100. 
Of course, decimals don't work very well when counting people. What is point two of a person? So make sure to be careful when reporting this data. The second number in the box is the row percentage. This functions in the same manner as the first number, but horizontally rather than vertically. So if you take a group of 100 people that are very satisfied with their lives, about 25 of them make less than $20,000, and about 17 make 80,000 or more. The third number represents the number of people, the sample, from the survey that belongs in each cell of the table. You shouldn't be using these numbers for your calculations. Taking a look at the documentation can tell you how small the number can be to be able to make generalizations about the survey sample. The last number is an estimation of the population represented by each cell. For example, while 9,361 people with a personal income of less than $20,000 answered that they feel very satisfied with life, they are estimated to represent a little under 3 million Canadians. These are the numbers you should be working with for your analysis. The colors are also helpful in understanding the data by indicating where the numbers are smaller or larger than expected. Red means that the numbers are higher than their neighbors, while blue represents smaller. You may also wish to filter some of the information within the table. For example, we might want to filter our table by sex to check on the life satisfaction of women. To do so, find the variable which you want to use as a filter. Here we will use dhh underscore sex, which is in the dwelling and household module. Click on it to place it in the selected text box and use copy to filter to place it in the table construction section of the interface. You will notice that there are parentheses next to the filter variable. Here you must enter values of the variable. Click on view in the variable selection section and you will find the values of the variable with their accompanying labels. Select the value corresponding with the aspect of the variable you want to filter and add it within the parentheses. For example, here we use two to filter for female and get a table of life satisfaction specific to women. The control feature is also a useful tool. Using the control feature runs the data tables repeatedly to check all values of a control variable to see how it might have an impact on our two cross-tabbed variables. Depending on your research question, you may wish to control a table based upon geography, language, sex, age, etc. To do this, search for the variable you wish to use and add it to the control section. Let's try controlling our tables by location. Enter the variable name geo underscore prv into the selected box and copy to control. Now run the table. The result is 14 tables of life satisfaction by income for women, 13 tables for provinces and territories, and a final table for all cases, so the whole country. If you enjoy doing analysis online in SDA, you'll find even more possibilities under the Analysis tab. If you have any questions about using SDA at CHAS or for the contact information of Dalhousie's data librarian, you can check out the data research guide found in the description below. So there you have it. If you want to access data, SDA at CHAS can be a good resource to use, whether you wish to download an entire data set or quickly view data tables. Thanks for watching. For subject guides, live help, other online tutorials, and contact information for the five Dalhousie libraries, check out the links in the description below.